Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless an unprecedented monsoon season slamming pakistan with torrential rains and flooding tearing through towns destroying almost everything in its path a third of the country underwater according to the pakistani government the monster floods have killed more than 1100 people 33 million people, or one in every seven Pakistanis, has been affected by the floods. Now, the survivors face a new challenge, hunger. Our team on the ground visiting this relief camp in Peshawar, Pakistan, where families lack basic necessities, children are getting sick, and this man says they've only been fed rice since arriving at the camp. People crowding supply trucks, begging for food and water and some residents telling us they regret not taking the earlier warnings to evacuate seriously. Like this man and his family, who were asleep when the floodwaters came, saying, we didn't believe the government and ignored its flood warnings as the weather was clear and there was no rain in the town. But since the monsoon season started back in mid-June, torrential rains compounded by melting glaciers brought yes. devastating floods. Government officials say Pakistan is the country with the most glaciers outside of the polar regions, placing it directly in the front lines of possible disasters brought on by climate change. Pakistan contributes negligible amounts to the overall uh, carbon footprint, but we do, uh, we are devastated by climate disasters such as these time and time again. The government estimating over $10 billion in damages. Army helicopters pulling people to safety and dropping off supplies. I haven't seen any destruction or devastation of this scale. The Pakistani government struggling to keep up with the need as the international community steps up to help. But for the families in Peshawar, little relief. Most have lost everything. And with more rain expected in September, the fight for survival continues. Tom, the sheer magnitude of the destruction and devastation is hard to fathom. If you take a look at the before and after satellite images, vast swathes of the country have changed. Green fields are now covered in brown water. Pakistan was already in a financial crisis. This latest catastrophe is only going to make life more difficult for the world's fifth most populated country. Placing it directly in the front lines of possible disasters brought on by climate change. Romans 1 18 through 25 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because although they knew God they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 is a description of ungodly, unrighteous, foolish men and their attempt to rationalize away evidence of the true God. It perfectly describes the writings of Charles Darwin in The Evolution Lie. The climate change cultists have exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. These foolish men deify Mother Earth for the sake of ecological purity. Climate change is being used to destroy national sovereignty and autonomy 
in order to bring in a one world government headed by the Antichrist. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 21, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. Jesus is referring to the last three and a half years of the tribulation in which the intensity of God's wrath will be like no other time in history. One of the judgments will include the deadliest hailstorm in history, with hailstones weighing 100 pounds each falling from the sky as we read in Revelation 16:21. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent, which is 100 pounds. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Ferocious, and ferocious is a word, these wildfires that are creating dangerous conditions in parts of California. Walls of flames have surrounded buildings and prompted evacuations across southern areas of the state. The fires are threatening multiple communities near Los Angeles and San Diego, including Castiake, which is north of Los Angeles. Jonathan Bigliotti is there with more on the story. We're about a mile and a half away from where this fire is currently active, threatening a power plant this morning on private property. The biggest concern this morning is the heat. Right now, it is 85 degrees this afternoon. Temperatures are expected to spike to around 107 degrees. Fire mapped at 4,000. 625 acres. Firefighters say they don't expect containing the root fire soon as thousands of acres have burned in only a few hours northwest of Los Angeles. Folks out there are just taking a beating. Filling the air with smoke, the blaze has surrounded homes, burned structures, and closed highways, including sections of Interstate 5. With this heat wave, it's very hot and dry. We saw how quickly a small ignition can ignite and spread very rapidly. At least eight people were injured Wednesday night and hundreds of homes have been evacuated in Los Angeles County, while in San Diego County, another fire has burned at least four buildings as some residents fled. Just craziness, firefighters left and right, um, the police here and there. The flames are fueled by a drought and triple digit temperatures expected to continue plaguing the state for the days to come, meaning more risks for heat related problems over the weekend. We're in this for a while. This is probably not going to be the only fire that we're dealing with here in LA County over the next uh, week or so, but uh, the heat is a, a big factor. Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Wading through flood water is the only way Adam Ismail and his mother can get to their home. Floodwaters wrecked the property in Sudan's Jazeera state, and their family was forced to seek drier lands. We woke up to water entering the homes and got out what we could. Every hour there is a house that's fallen, or a sewage system that's collapsed, or a wall that's come down. There is nothing left. All the other homes in the village were also flooded when heavy rains hit the state two weeks ago. Rains and torrential floods in Sudan have killed at least 100 people, and hundreds of others have been injured. Tens of thousands of homes have been destroyed. Hamdan Tia put up barricades, but his house still suffered major damage. We took out the children and what furniture we could, but the house had been destroyed. We built barriers and are still draining out the water. Now we're worried about the diseases the water can bring, like malaria, as well as other infections. The rainy season has been described by some as one of the worst they've ever seen, and the downpours have affected nearly the whole country. Jazeera is one of the states where the government has declared a disaster. Dozens of villages have been submerged here since the beginning of the rainy season, leaving hundreds of families homeless. Many have sought refuge on drier lands, 
but they say they're yet to receive any help. We practically need everything because people lost everything. Shelter, food, water, health care. The most important thing we need is for the water to be drained so they can go back. I hear people crying at night because of the situation we are in. I don't believe there are any coincidences when it comes to God. I believe God is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. And he is speaking through today's world news headlines of Jesus' soon return and coming judgment. These plagues of extreme weather are more frequent and more intense just like Jesus said they would be just prior to his return. What we are witnessing is just a glimpse of what the seven-year tribulation will be like. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. And as the tensions mount in the South China Sea, Taiwan firing warning shots at a Chinese drone that flew over an offshore island during military exercises on Tuesday. Taipei officials doubling down, vowing to counterattack if China enters its territory. Gordon Chang, senior fellow at the Gates Stone Institute and author of The Coming Collapse of China, joins us now. Uh, you know, Gordon, is this more provocation or is this the real deal? Or should we all get ready for World War III here? Well, we certainly should get ready for a heightened state of tension. And I believe that the U.S. forces worldwide should move to DEFCON 2. Two things happened in the last few hours. One of them is Taiwan shot down a Chinese drone over one of its islets, Lion Island, uh, which is four kilometers from um, the Chinese mainland. More important, the Chinese refused to move their drone after the firing of warning shots. In other words, China is trying to provoke a crisis. And this crisis obviously could spiral out of control. And what we have right now is the situation which could very well end up in a general conflict in East Asia. You have a conflict in East Asia, a conflict in Ukraine, and that's the, really the beginnings of the world's next global war. Where's Joe Biden? How should he be responding? Joe Biden should be in front of a, tel of a television camera right now talking to the American people about getting ready for war. The, the Chinese are, are not only involved in, in what is the biggest military buildup since the Second War, what they're also doing is they're mobilizing the Chinese people for conflict. And we see this in any number of different ways. So this is a total society effort on the part of Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler. We don't know what's going on in the Chinese political system right now. The guess is that Xi has consolidated his power and he's now going after neighbors. If so, you know, the United States needs to be very firm in this. We need to be clear saying we will defend Taiwan to prevent the Chinese attacking. Anything can happen right now, Todd and Ashley. So, Gordon, is the U.S. military prepared for something like this? Can they handle this? They're not prepared uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, the Navy has been broken for a decade. The Air Force is not in great shape either. Um, and also, the political leadership of the uh, in the Pentagon is not, I think, mentally prepared to fight a general war. You know, they're much more interested in, in things like, you know, woke culture and the rest of it. But also, they believe that if a conflict with China comes, it'll come no earlier than five years from now. And that's why they're retiring ships and planes. They need to be ready for a conflict with China in the next few hours, not five years from now. Well, the good news, Gordon, is that if the battle comes down to pronouns, it looks like we will win there mm -hmm. in the U.S. military. Uh, that is sarcasm. If Joe Biden had demonstrated strength throughout his term, when you look at places like Afghanistan. Would China be doing what it's doing right now? I don't think so. When Afghanistan was falling, the Chinese propaganda was that that when China invaded Taiwan, not if Todd, but that when China invaded Taiwan, the U.S. would not rush to the island's defense. 
We, of course, saw not only the calamitous withdrawal from Afghanistan, but the failure of the West, the United States, the European Union, and Great Britain to deter a far weaker Russia in Ukraine. I think the Chinese have taken that on board, and they believe that the United States is not prepared to defend anyone at this particular time. Now, I'm not saying they're right, but that's what they're thinking. And that's extremely dangerous because deterrence has broken down. And the most dangerous periods in history are those when a country like the United States tries to reestablish deterrence. That's when things go horribly wrong. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning two billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to four billion. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Patient in Texas, the first reported death of an American with monkeypox. The exact cause of death is unknown, but the patient did have the virus. And tonight, there's also growing concern over children getting this. At least 31 cases in children here in this country. And ABC's Maria Villarreal from Texas. Tonight, the first reported death of an American with monkeypox. Officials say the patient was a severely immunocompromised adult who died at a Houston area hospital. This patient also had underlying health conditions and had a number of things going on. And I think that uh, additional investigation is needed to know what role monkeypox may or may not have played in their death. The CDC today stressing that death from monkeypox is rare. Of the nearly 50,000 cases around the world, just 15 have been fatal. The vast majority of U.S. infections have been in men who have sex with other men, but at least 31 children have also contracted monkeypox, including an infant who was exposed to the virus by a family member and treated at a Seattle hospital. The main thing that the patient was experiencing was the rash and complications of the rash. And David, for children, there is no evidence right now that there is transmission within schools so far. Here in Texas, uh, officials are reporting nine pediatric cases, and the CDC is warning there is preliminary evidence that suggests in children under the age of eight, the illness can be more severe. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Christians would be persecuted as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and Luke 21, 12. Matthew 24, 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Luke 21:12. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. 
A year has passed since President Biden withdrew forces from Afghanistan. So how are Christians there faring under Taliban rule? Humanitarian aid worker John Weaver says many Afghan Christians have stayed in the country to be salt and light to the people. Many did flee. God made a way for many of them to, to leave the country, but many chose to stay to be the ambassadors of Christ there, to be witnesses, to be salt and light. As also you know, it's their homeland. And they have the proverb, you know, home, homeland is like the place of gold. And so many wanted to stay because that's their homeland, but they chose to stay to be a blessing, to be a witness, to be a light in that dark place. Romans 10, 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Well, tell me, so how are they faring, John? Are they, are they being persecuted there? Gary, in some ways it's worse as it's been. As you mentioned, I was there before 9-11, was there during the times of 9-11 and you know, beyond. And, and now with the Taliban in full control of the country, in some ways it's as worse as it's ever been economically, uh, socially and in terms of religious persecution. Yes, they are like sheep among wolves, uh, daily being harassed and daily being followed and daily being watched. And it's very challenging for believers in Afghanistan. Any of them been killed, John? As far as we know, yes, some have been martyred for their faith. They've entered that great cloud of witness. Uh, some, as we speak, possibly could be behind bars. Uh, some are in hiding. Uh, yes, there has been intense persecution and opposition from uh, the radical Muslims since uh, the events of August last year. It's not just threats from the Taliban. I know from my own time there meeting with believers there, perhaps the greatest danger may come from family, neighbors, friends. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the social pressure can begin right in your own home or in your oikos, your circle of influence, because it's a Muslim context. You know, it's against Sharia law or against the laws of Islam. Uh, to leave the Muslim religion and embrace another, you know, faith or a worldview. So when people encounter Christ and Christ is pursuing them, the Lord's pursuing them, and as they come out of Islam into the, the kingdom of light, there is persecution, opposition from their own family, from their own neighbors, from their own community, because it's a Muslim country. In a general sense, most everyone identifies with Islam there in Afghanistan. What can we do for them, those in Afghanistan, our brothers and sisters in Christ? Well, regardless of mistakes that we might have made in the past, we need to advocate, you know, be advocates for their situation because some are still trying to leave. Some are stuck in places in neighboring countries, you know, trying to find, you know, quote unquote, safe places to live. Uh, we need to pray for them. They're always asking us to pray for them, uh, especially those that have you know, seen God's provision as protection. They've also seen tangible answers to prayer, miracles and provisions from the Lord and answers to prayer. So we want to mobilize the body of Christ to be praying for our brothers and sisters uh, in Afghanistan. And then there are ways, Gary, that we're getting humanitarian assistance uh, into uh, the country and we want to continue doing that as well. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also, Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. 
and I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in scripture as the Antichrist as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, Salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God, whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit, as we read in John 3.3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself. As we read in John 6:44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3:9 and Romans 2:4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian, but lives in willful disobedience to Christ, has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh as we read in Galatians 
519 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. through But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance.